You guys have seen this drive before, but now it has been upgraded. You're now tuned into Sykes Weekly Nerf Dosage. Hey, what's up, good people? Welcome to episode 140 of Pwned. This episode is about my upgraded strife. You guys have seen this strife in action before in that video where I made about the spinning darts. This is the same strife. The internals are the same, but I've added on some cosmetic stuff. And you guys actually asked me about the internals as well. So I decided that I would show you what the external now are, how I installed the cosmetic kit, and how the internals are wired as well. So check it out. Let's start with all the cosmetic parts I got ready for this drive. First of all, it is the F10555 MP101 front muzzle kit. I think I should call it a front muzzle kit. I don't know, just a cosmetic kit, I guess. And it goes onto the front of the drive. Very, very well made Atlas style. So it's pretty cool, very sci fi. I like it because it's sci fi. Next, I actually have a foldable uh, please ignore that i don't have the screws right now because yeah i'll be installing it later but it is a foldable vertical grip so you can have it in this position or in the 45 degree position or in the fully closed position then i have an artifact metal strife trigger followed by an artifact metal strife mag release lever and last but not least i actually have a folding stock attachment and I forgot who was the one that made this um, it's also from Taobao but the cool thing about it is that it flips towards the left half of the blaster and so in that way you know uh, people with expanded battery trays don't have to worry about this all right so these are all the cosmetic stuff that I'm gonna put into the strife let's talk about the internals right now you guys are already familiar with this strife this is the very same stripe I used to film the dart spinning bsp cage video so if you guys have no idea what i'm talking about i made a video that basically proved that the bsp or canted flywheel cages actually make darts spin and if you guys are interested check out this annotation over here to go check that video out but let's talk about the internals of this strife now shall we uh, there's this metal thing over here and that's just really for cosmetics let's get our shell open and uh, I'll just explain what this is to you. It's just cosmetic ridges, man. See? It's screwed in. Hehe, <laughs> you can just remove it. I, th I thought it was cool, so I just left it there. But anyway, here are the internals of this particular strife. I have a BSP flywheel cage. This part was just spray painted silver. I got a pair of worker flywheels. And on the inside here, I'm actually using PTG and not brass. And that's because uh, at the point of time when I installed this guy, I didn't have brass and I realized that PTG works perfectly. So I just stuck to it. Now onto the wiring of the blaster. As you guys can see, I have an XSW auto strife kit in it, but there is a little safety mechanism and uh, this is just my own way of doing it. Now, I didn't really go online to check if there anyone out there who did a little safety switch or safety mechanism. So this is really just purely based off whatever I know of electronics. What I'm talking about is that when you have a battery connected, even if you were to squeeze the trigger, this motor will not work. Not unless the flywheels are already revving first. So you basically have to have this running, then you'll be able to pull the trigger on this. So if you work it independently, this will not work. And how I did that is very simple. Now I'll just throw a couple of diagrams for you guys on screen so that you can understand. Okay, pause. This is the explanation of the circuit diagram. Not just the circuit diagram itself, but an explanation as well. Now take note, I do not have the checker switch like the rapid strike. So this is just a very simple, very basic two switch diagram featuring just the flywheels and the pusher motor, okay? Now here we go. First of all, you have your battery and next you have your flywheels and look at the positive and negative terminals. And then you'll need a switch for it. Now before I carry on, I'm gonna explain the switch to you. I call this the rev switch because this is basically to operate the five wheels, right? But C, NC, and NO, in case you guys have no idea what they are, you'll find these labels on three pin switches. C stands for common, NC stands for normally closed, and NO stands for normally open. Now normally closed means that it's a closed circuit, so this is your off position, all right? So from common to NC is always your off position. And then when you press down the switch and turn it on, it goes to normally open, okay? All right, moving on, your next component is your pusher motor, of course, 
and then you also need a switch for the pusher motor and I'm gonna call it the trigger switch. What's happening in this diagram is that we are creating a sort of safety mechanism for the two switches, meaning that the trigger switch will never work unless the rev switch is turned on. So this is just the wiring first, we'll get to the explanation later. Let's start the wiring right now, here we go. The first step is gonna be from the battery and you want to start from the positive terminal of the battery going out to the normally open terminal of the rev switch. And then you're gonna connect the common terminal of the rev switch to your positive terminal of the flywheels. Following which you'll get the negative terminal of the flywheels and connect it all the way back to the negative terminal of the battery. And this actually makes a working circuit already with no motor braking, but now we want motor braking don't we? Alright, so how do we get motor braking? Just create a parallel connection from the negative end of the flywheels to your normally closed terminal of the rev switch. Next, you're gonna create a parallel connection from the, the common terminal of the rev switch and connect it to the normally open terminal of the trigger switch. Then you're gonna make a connection from the common terminal of the trigger switch to your positive terminal of the pusher motor. And from the negative terminal of your pusher motor, you're gonna create a parallel connection to the negative end of the battery. Last but not least, we're going to create a motor braking connection for the pusher motor and that is done by creating a parallel connection from the negative end of the pusher motor into the normally closed terminal of the trigger switch. This, my friend, is the completed circuit. Now, let me explain how the circuit flows. The way current works is that it's always wanting to flow out, so you can actually see it flowing out to the normally open end of the rev switch. Now what happens when you turn on the switch and basically change the connection from normally closed to normally open on the rev switch, the current starts to flow and it will flow to the positive terminal of the flywheels and out from the negative end of the flywheels, it will travel all the way back to your battery. This creates a closed circuit but at the same time, we're going to pay attention to the parallel output for the motor braking. So what happens is current is flowing and it realizes that it's a dead end at the normally closed terminal of the rev switch and therefore it doesn't short circuit at all. So this turns on the flywheels. Easy right? So what if you turn off the rev switch after turning it on? Now this means that you cut off the flow coming in from the battery at the normally open terminal and you've created a loop at the normally closed terminal. So what happens is that you won't get any more current flowing from the battery and that also means that you won't get any more current going back into the battery. And if you look closely, you've created a closed loop. So what's happening now is actually a pretty simple phenomenon. Think about the behavior of the flywheels. When you turn it on and you let go of the rev switch, your flywheels don't just immediately stop. They're taking time to gradually slow down, but they still are producing energy. So what you're trying to do is trying to power up the flywheels by themselves. So think about it this way. With the residual energy in your flywheels that are going to slowly trickle away, you're trying to power the flywheels up again and therefore that cuts the energy almost instantly. Get what I'm trying to say? So it's a very simple and very effective method. Alright, so everything is reset again. Let's start from the top and let's go all the way to the pusher motor this time. So current's flowing out from the battery into the normally open terminal of the rev switch but look at the trigger switch and if we turn it on, there's no current flowing from the common terminal of the rev switch down to the trigger switch so you are safe, right? So we're going to reset the trigger switch and this is what happens when you turn on the rev switch. Current flows from the normally open terminal to the common terminal and it goes all the way around to the flywheels as before and so the whole flywheels power up because there was no problem, right? So no problem, right? Everyone understands this? Okay, I'm going to darken this because we already know what's happening here. Now, as I mentioned before, current is always trying to flow out. So current is actually trying to flow out from the common terminal of the rev switch into the normally open terminal of the trigger switch, just like that. So what happens when you press the trigger switch then? You basically bridge the gap from the normally open terminal of the trigger switch to the common terminal of the trigger switch and so current can flow from the common terminal of the trigger switch into the positive terminal of the pusher. And current actually flows back from the negative terminal of the pusher into the negative terminal of the battery because it's all lined up in parallel. And so what happens next? This is a closed circuit but we're gonna also make sure that the current doesn't short itself at the normally closed terminal of the trigger switch and so because everything is working fine, the pusher motor turns on. Simple right? Now what happens when you let go of the trigger switch? Just like before, the motor braking system cuts in. So because there's no more power coming in from the normally open terminal of the trigger switch, you create a little loop 
and so the pusher motor will try to power up itself with whatever residual energy it has and stops immediately or almost immediately at least. Now if we turn it back on, what happens when you let go of the rev switch instead? BAM! Now there is no longer any current coming in from the battery at all, so the flywheels go into their motor braking stage. Now what happens here? Because there is no current coming in and because there's a parallel connection going out from the common terminal of the rev switch, the flywheels are technically trying to also power up the pusher motor and that means you get a super big closed circuit with the flywheels trying to power up both the flywheels and the pusher motor and then you get one big super motor braking circuit. I hope you found this interesting guys. I took a hell of a lot of time to draw this entire diagram for you guys and put colours in and animate it and stuff and I hope that you like it. Please do. Please do. <laughs> Let's go back to the video. But basically from the power source, it goes mainly into the rev switch first and then from the rev switch, it splits into a parallel circuit where the rev switch is turned on, then you are able to power up this guy over here that goes to here. So it's, it's a very simple explanation but hopefully you guys can understand what that does. And that's so that you won't get any jams in case you accidentally pull the trigger with the clip all the way in. Alright. Now, let's go for the installation of those kits. Now, first of all, we're going to have to remove this guy. But, you don't have to if you don't have a barrel sticking out. The thing is, I have a barrel sticking out because I'm using a third-party cage, right? So, it goes in all the way. I got to remove these four screws so I can lift up this orange piece over here. Because the F10555 MP101 kit is a full replacement of this entire area over here. Alright, so let's get down to that. Now that I've removed all four screws, I'm going to just take out this guy over here. We don't need that anymore. Then I'm going to slowly lift up the orange piece while tilting the flywheel cage up because I didn't remove this part over here. And my wire is actually running on the inside as you guys can see. So here we go. Just lift it up gently, and tilt it a little bit so I can get this guy out. So to install this guy, in my case, I'm going to have to make sure that I sleeve this barrel into the slot over here, which is also for the front. And then I'm going to make sure that all these four slots here line up with these guys those bosses over there okay because they're bosses so here we go just slide this in and line the four bosses up all the slots go in nicely and make sure that my flywheel cage sits in place so it should look like this before you actually screw your flywheel cage down all right and you can see that there's a little ridge over here that goes into the slot so this is how you know that it lines up but wait a minute if you guys realize if you're gonna attach anything to the rail down here, you're gonna have to do it right now. Especially if your attachment is the kind that you slide onto a rail because right here it's blocked. And by the time you install this, it's blocked here as well. So if your rail attachment is not the kind that splits open and you can just clip it on, you're gonna have to slide whatever you want into the rail here right now before you close up the shell. There is one problem however, the way this rail is made, this part over here is a bit wider than the part inside here. You guys can see that ridge over there? Yeah, so what I did was I just used a screwdriver and I made some grooves so I could push it down a little bit so it might help to guide whatever I'm gonna slide in. And that is my folding vertical grip. Now, here's the thing. Don't forget this is 3D printed. So if you're gonna slide it in, don't just do it this way. You might run the risk of snapping this part off. So my advice to you guys is to go slow Find a support and slowly slide this guy in bit by bit. Line up the Picatinny rail slots and go really, really slow. Patience is the key virtue here, guys. Always make sure you remember that. Exercise patience. Okay, so we got the first slot in. All right. Very gently guys, very very gently, you don't want to mess it up at this point, you know what I mean? See, that's the scary part, if it snaps off right here, good game everyone, good game. And once your attachment gets past this ridge over here, everything is going to be much smoother as you guys can see. Alright, so I'm going to leave it here like that with the screw not installed because I want to be able to close up the shell and adjust it later. Now with that in place, we're just going to go ahead and line everything up nicely again and install this front piece like that. I'm gonna make sure that the flywheels sit on the bosses respectively as well. Like so. Then we're gonna grab the screws and install them back here. Alrighty, next up we're gonna remove this screw right here 
and we're gonna take these two guys out just this part remove it grab our replacement and slips right there make sure everything lines up and install the screw back that is the artifact mag release lever working perfectly next remove this screw over here where the trigger is remove the trigger make sure you don't lose the trigger return spring if you have an xsw kit installed if not you don't have the spring then it doesn't matter but grab your artifact trigger set it in place make sure everything is measured nicely yep that's perfect now install this right here make sure it sits in the right slot make sure everything sits nicely then install the screw back in place like that and make sure that your trigger works good it's good now the one thing you got to take note of when you're installing the artifact trigger is that when you install this screw back in place make sure that it's not too tight if not the trigger will easily get stuck let me show you what i mean i'm gonna just tighten it a little bit more and then you realize that there's no way for me to move this thing unless i put a lot of pressure and now that it's back here it's stuck so make sure you loosen it up just a bit so that the trigger can freely return yep that's what you want so now that we're done we're going to remove all the excess or leftover parts put this guy back in place and finally install the second half of the shell and last but not least all that's left now is to just install the screws back in place and we are good to go so with the shell closed trigger works mag release works ref button works everything works good to go welcome back i hope that gave you guys a better insight on how this strife was wired nothing really difficult honestly and it was a very very easy straightforward build and uh you guys can actually see the cosmetics right now in all this beauty now i want to talk a bit about this this is known as the f10 triple five and i know it's going to be funny it's called the mp 101 now it's got a little branding atlas thingy over here and this atlas branding okay i gotta be honest and straightforward with you guys i don't really play games much so i had to do a lot of research because i've seen a lot of cosmetic mods or people who actually do a lot of cosmetics to their blasters actually label their stuff with this particular brand and i found out that it's actually from call of duty so uh i went to read up quite a bit on the call of duty atlas corporation or is it called corporation but atlas branded firearms within the game and i realized that there was no mp101 i might be wrong so please correct me if i am this could be also f10 just coming up with a design that is pretty sci-fi very futuristic looking and just wanted it to be kind of like call of duty themed so he just labeled it as an atlas gun you see so it's an atlas design if you ask me in my personal opinion i think this actually looks very very close to the atlas sn6 and then of course i have a foldable vertical grip and this is the one that actually allows me to have it in the 45 degree position but yeah i could switch it over to an angle fall grip i don't know yet okay i don't like the way it looks when it's it's collapsed down i like the way it looks when it's all the way out like that so yeah and these two are just purely cosmetics uh it's screwed in it's a pair of just like screwed rivets these are for arts and crafts i think i don't know what people will use it for but it just it just looks cool so i just put it there and it's a perfect slot because of all these vents over here and i've got the expanded battery case from gavin i filled in this debossed area over here uh with white paint i uh, didn't do a very good job i don't think it's very clean uh but you know at first it was just orange and white but now this and this are black so i've also got the uh trigger from artifact and i also got the release lever also from artifact and this stock over here is from another group and i have no idea what it's called like you can see the branding over here it looks like a letter m and the alphabet's 3d m 3d i don't know correct me if i'm wrong but it's printed over here on this part and um this part still works like this uh you know when you push it down so you can flip it in uh this is all molded plastic it's very hollow though it looks like it's two halves screwed in and uh, the good thing about it is it flips towards the left half of your blaster so it would not get in the way of your expanded battery case and that's the reason why I got it. However, I have to say that I have one very very major gripe about it. It is held in place by a thumb screw. Okay, first of all, let me just make sure I get it out. Hold on, I need the help of a hex key because I actually tightened this pretty tight. Now, this is the main thing I don't like about it. 
So you can see all the paint that was being scratched off and this happened the very first time I installed this guy. Now, before this, I actually thought that the alignment was off. I wasn't able to fit it in. And then I just thought about it and I was like, wait, the product picture shows that it fits on a strife. So I forced it in and this is what happened. So uh, I think that since this particular manufacturer or the printer is actually using a thumb screw that sits inside this ridge over here or this slot for the screw port, I think that he could afford to just make this whole entire slot just about one millimeter taller because it's the the height that is getting in the way or at least shorten this part just by a bit so it's kind of like you hear that and it's kind of scary so you got to make sure that you push it all the way in like that then you can start tightening this thumb screw now if you don't line it up you're going to damage the screw slot on the inside so that's another downside but apart from that uh, it's a very comfortable length, very uh, slick looking and I like it because now Oops, I dropped the clip but it's okay uh, Very slick looking, it's easy to make it very compact and it doesn't get in the way of the operation of the blaster at all That's what I really like about it So that was the cosmetics and the internals of this blaster Now I'm going to give you guys a quick firing demonstration and in this blaster right now is a 2S LiPo battery I have with me a 12 dart clip filled to the brim So let's just fire off all of this um, okay, let's just extend the stock. There we go. All 12 darts out on a 2S battery. Let's go. Out with absolutely no gems whatsoever, which is awesome, right? Now, I'm going to change it over into a 3S battery. And uh, yeah, good job to Gavin because his expanded battery case comes with a thumb screw and it's awesome. All right, so just going to swap this out and if you guys are wondering what battery i'm using i'm using a voltron 850 milliampers uh 2s battery and this one is a voltron 850 amperes 3s battery we have also one in i think 1200 or 1300 milliampers not so sure but anyway yep so just gonna and i love the expanded battery case because you can actually fit a 3s battery in it as well as you guys can see then you just gotta tighten it with the thumb screw and you are good to go. All right, so uh, got another fresh 12 dart clip filled to the brim. Now running on a 3S battery because these guys are Rhino motors. So here we go. Super high ROF, no gems at all. Uh, you know, uh, I'm not a fan of super high ROF, but the 2S, 3S, batteries does make a difference with the with the flywheels so you get further uh distances you get better performance out of firing the only problem is the rate of fire and i'm still contemplating whether i want to put a potential meter into this thing you know to try and control the voltage but i might be just too lazy you know i i don't know yet but i'll think about it okay i'll think about it all in all this is an awesome blaster i really really like it i've liked it the moment i finished modding it but when i saw that mp101 kit this mp101 kit over here i told myself i need to get it so i got it via newbie this thing is cool i mean look at the detail of it it's very very nicely made a lot of minor details here you got a little slot over here i don't know if you guys can actually see but it's a very very nice nicely printed slot in fact like the lines on the inside are all very clean you got an iron sight over here of course this one is a bit you know there's there's a bit of uh what do you call it whiskers i don't know what you call it but there's a little bit of whiskers left over not a problem you know you can easily just send it out or you can just clean it out not an issue of course this is printed by the well-known f10 triple five so no doubt in the product in terms of the print quality as well as the design so good job f10 triple five you're always doing good stuff and i do not regret getting this thing it's just really awesome very easy install and looks great all right uh this thing about the stock now that i've already gotten over all the gripes i think this is a very very cool stock it's comfortable it's it's the most important thing above the worker foldable stock is the fact that it falls towards the left and not the right because that's where the battery case is so this is the main reason why of course it doesn't feel as solid as worker stock the two main pros that this stock has over the worker foldable stock is that number one it's way lighter number two it falls to the left so it's really up to you guys you know what you guys want for your blaster the worker stock is a buffer tube attachment so you can just put on any ctr stock if you want but this is locked as this stock itself so there's no way to change this out however i think it looks all right this way what's your opinion <laughs>
And with that, we have come to the end of the video. Thank you so much for sticking all the way throughout, guys. I really appreciate it. And I'm always doing my best to bring you new stuff like this. And I hope that you guys liked it. If you did, I hope you give me a thumbs up as well. And if you're not subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing. It would really help me out a lot. Stay tuned for the next episode because I have a couple of more reviews coming soon. You guys already saw in the previous episode where it was me and my vlog style going to visit the Nerf anniversary, the Nerf Singapore anniversary. So, um, yeah, stay tuned for that. All right, so till the next time, guys, Jules paid the bills and teamwork makes the dream work. I'll see you soon. Peace.